and sort of one of the things the creationists love to play with, with this is that what we call uniformitarianism, which is the geologic principle that everything happens slowly. That's how it's frequently been sort of screwed up in public persona. And that's, you know, in geology for a long time after Hutton sort of comes up with this theory and it gets accepted, sort of gets hung up on the, oh, what I would term today ultra uniformitarianism, which isn't just that, you know, that geology happens slowly. What Hutton really said was, the only processes that have acted in the history of the Earth are the processes that we can see happening today. That's, the, that's really uniformitarianism. It's that we don't propose that there are events that occur that we can't observe occurring today on this planet. So we know what forces move rocks. We know what forces erode rocks. They're all forces that are active today. We can observe them. We don't postulate that there's other forces working in the past that we can't observe today. And he also then notes that all the forces we observe today are slow. Or, or, or relatively slow, and that gets turned into sort of by screw up and <coughs> theology is slow. And because you were fighting a different intellectual tradition, that of what they would call the time catastrophism, they sort of went too far. And so by the time you get to the end of the 19th century, no catastrophic things happen in geology according to mainstream geology. So when they find things like meteor crater, it wasn't a meteorite impact because that's a catastrophic event. You know, you find things like the channeled <laughs> scab lands in Pacific Northwest, that had to be explained by a slow, gradual process. And so then people like J. Harlan Bretz up in the Channel of Scadlands is the guy who first says, wait a minute, no, this looks like something that has to be catastrophic, a big dam break. And that comes, and so he fights tooth and nail to it, you know, to get it, um, uh, basically people accept that he was given a big award in 1979, 1980, finally by the Geologic Society, sort of recognizing his great contributions. And he was sort of a person who took a lot of ridicule. He was a real cantankerous guy. And he reportedly gets up at his sort of acceptance speech and remarks that when you live, because he was like 99, has lived as long as he had, that you have no more enemies left to gloat over. That <laughs> <laughs> he gets, you know. And so that was also that, that notion of sort of super uniformitarianism is also one of the things that sort of kept geology from really liking plate tech or continental drift. Um, now, of course, this has come back, and now we recognize that, yeah, catastrophic events occur. And the creationists have enjoyed this when they can find any time a geologist talks about some catastrophic event to see it proves their point. But what they're missing is there are a lot of catastrophic events in the history of the Earth that are recorded. In fact, the pendulum has swung so far back now that we now basically practice what we refer to as event stratigraphy. And they, people who were doing studying rocks, so they're trying to reconstruct the history of rocks and how they form, come up, came up with sort of an interesting observation. So if you go out and look at the average world and you watch what very slow sedimentary processes or erosional processes go on, like the action of the Colorado River today, and they argue, well, those are so small that they will never be preserved in the record. That the everyday activity of a river will not be preserved. The only time we see big piles of sediment stacked up that are likely to be left over is a flood. And not just your annual flood, but your 50-year flood, your 100-year flood, your 500-year flood. But not the capital F flood. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's the distinction. I mean, it's true that you know, geology recognizes that catastrophes happen. Right? They, they, have a, they should have a geological bumper sticker that says catastrophes happen. That doesn't mean that even if you can get a 40-foot canyon cut up at Mount St. Helens when um, Mount St. Helens blew up and uh, the ash impounded a, a lake, that lake cut through catastrophically and built this 30-foot canyon. Just because you can get a 30, 40-foot canyon up at Mount St. Helens through catastrophic procedures doesn't mean Grand Canyon was cut the same way. Um, they love catastrophic uh, geology, like Fish was saying. That doesn't mean that the whole, all the sedimentary uh, uh, structures on the planet were the result of catastrophe.